Hi, it's Fiona Fernandez from By Fee Handcrafts and uh, today I'm making some face masks. So I just thought I'd show you a few little tips when I'm turning them through and ironing them. So I use the Japanese sewing books face mask pattern and it's here, there's a QR code there if you want to take a snapshot of that. And I cut out, the I print out the pattern like this and then I cut out the one I want to use. So it has all the sizes on it. This is the one I'm using for the small one today. So this is a small, so that's this size here. And I just cut around the line I want to use. And then when you do go to cut the lining, you have to fold that back to the right line. So there's one size smaller on this sheet. And then you cut out your lining. So if you have a look on this one, that's my lining size there. Yeah. And you cut the interfacing as well as the inside liner the same size. Now I use my rotary cutter to do these and I find it quite quick and easy just to zip zip round round because I've done a fair bit of quilting and sewing and I just find it easier than using scissors just getting around the curves and nice straight lines. You can actually use your quilting ruler if you have one to get those nice straight lines. I just tend to freehand it now. <laughs> I've been doing it for a while. So they end up once you've turned them through. I've got a couple of these ones again and I've got a couple of orders in there as well. So once you've finished turning it through it looks like this. That's the back. It's a bit hard to see with black but that's the inside. And when we're finished we do top stitch next over the top of the edges here, two millimeters in, and then I'll be folding them in like this and like that and stitching, and then you fold the ends in. So it's not very hard to make a little tiny bit fiddly because you've got the little points, but once you start doing a few of them, <laughs> you get the hang of it. So I'll just pop that over there and I'll just turn this one through to show you um, what I do with them. So they look like this once you've sewn them together. And I cut them so that um, you trim off these bits here so that you don't have any bulk near the points and on the bottom as well. See how close they are to the stitching? And then you actually snip with your sharp scissors into there as well so that you can turn it through. So once you go like that with it, because once you've turned it through it's going to want to go in to get that curve so you don't want the extra block there so that is what we do we just snip in there so we just turn it through turn it through and I actually have a, um, a cutting mat that's a rotary like a lazy Susan thing it turns around turntable and I find that really handy when I'm cutting these out so I just sort of turn it through and push into the points a little bit with my finger first and then I'll come to the other tool in a minute. So on the bottom here, when I'm doing work like this, if it, I've discovered a while ago and learning along the way is that if you actually put that down flat, you'll get a much better edge, especially if it's a really long one, but because that one's quite long, I'm going to iron that in there first. So just give that little press on that it there and you'll end up with a better finish on that part of it. It sits better when you turn it back out like that. I will iron it as well but it does sit flatter. So I use a thing called a purple thing, this one, and it's got a pointy end on one end and a quarter inch measurement on the other. You get that in the light, a quarter inch. So it's a really handy measuring tool. It's got a little hole in it and I use this to put my elastic through. I actually use this one and pop the top off it <laughs> but now it works just fine without the, the little end bit on it. So I've got another one for the end bit but they don't cost much. They're about six dollars. Now I do make these to sell and you can order them. I do make them to custom fit people too because not everyone has the same shaped face. So I usually get you to do the measurements for that. And on my um, blog you'll find information in the sewing section about my face masks. There's some in my online store already, my square store. Everything's on my blog, so if you look up Bifey Handcrafts blog, you'll find it. 
and um, I have Facebook and Instagram as well. So I just use my tool to get into all the little points and just be careful when you're doing that because um, <laughs> you can actually go right through the fabric if you're not careful but you just sort of go firmly but gently to get into there get your points happening and I just finger press it down a bit so that I keep those quarter inch seams which is a little bit hard to see on black and they look like that. Let's get that one going. So at the moment I only sell within Australia. But you know, feel free to use the pattern. It's a free pattern and I, I've talked to the, you know, asked her permission to sell that pattern. As in making the mouse, I mean. I don't sell the pattern. The pattern's free. There we go, there's one, and I'll just get the iron, get my plastic tools out of the way, give that a little press. I've just got the iron handy here, just give it a little press down, and once you've pressed that down, I'll take it to my sewing machine and do the top stitch. Got a few more to go yet. Now that one's not sitting as nicely as I would like, so I will just fiddle with that a tiny bit more. Just give it a bit more of a press. Pull that out. That's better. And we just keep going and turning them all through. So here's the button again. That's the face mask. So it sits, as you can see, it sits on that size when it's finished so that you've got all your seam allowances. Thanks for watching. Ciao.